Kahla Yahawa Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai Waha Rakak Wadash. Shalom to my older brother over here at my congregation, Shariyat. Shalom to all the hopefully like elders of the Israelite nation who rule well, namely the hopefully like elder apostles over at the Great Millstone Church. Peace and many blessings be as always to all you hopefully like men of the Israelite nation, diligently bringing forth the true doctrine of Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, namely the brothers that I personally labored with. Likewise, peace and many blessings be to the rest of the one-third. All you true believers out there of the Israelite nation, shalom to you all. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 37, and verse 1, a psalm of David. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. So we're going to touch this word fret really quick. The word in Hebrew is karah. And it means to be hot, to be furious, burn, become angry, be kindled. And the rest of the definition here are, you know, very similar. So we go hop down here to the Strong's definition. And um, I'm going to highlight this one, jealousy. It says become angry, burn, be displeased. So simply put, don't give your energy to these evildoers, man. That's the, the message. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. So let's touch evildoers. So evildoer says to be bad, to be evil, to be displeasing, to be sad, to be injurious, to be evil. Number four here says to be wicked. And the wicked, according to the Bible, is Esau, the nation of Edom, who we know today as the so-called white man. They are the root of the evil that is playing out here on the earth right now. According to the book of Job, chapter 9, and verse 24, we understand that the earth and current has been given into the hand of the wicked. So the wicked has rule on the earth right now. They have rulership. They have leadership. They have a role of being able to influence what goes on on the earth. And that's how we further understand that it's the so-called white man who is Edom, who is Esau, who is known as the wicked, according to the scriptures. So with them having that platform, they are able to promote all the other nations on the earth, and namely the two-thirds of the Israelite nation who are in the world, promote them to be evildoers because we understand that the scriptures are speaking to the Israelites. All right, so when we being warned here is to fret not thyself because of evildoers. So we seeing these these people who are evildoers amongst the earth. They're ultimately just following the ways of the powers that be, the rulers that be. Again, being a so called white man whose true identity is Esau, they're following their program. So when you see these Israelites, these rappers, these singers, these ball players, you know whatever it may be, who are prosperous in the, in this world. Those who are very prosperous, they come off, they seem like they have, you know, wealth, riches. They might have the nice cars. They might have the living situations, the mansions. You know, they're able to flaunt that. They have the um, enlarged bank accounts or whatever, and they're promoting wickedness amongst the nations because, you know, simply put, we understand that the Israelites, being the most influential people on the earth, are pretty much used, I ain't going to say pretty much, were ultimately used by the so-called white man to continue to promote his ways. That's why when you watch the NBA, the NFL, any sports league, any high-end entertainment, any anything, any everything is pushed, it's sold by the Israelites. And these Israelites, the two-thirds of the Israelite nation, who don't know who they are, and if they do know who they are, they just forsake this word. They are used to promote the ways of the wicked because we're the most influ influential people on the earth. And these are ultimately the evildoers that we are not to fret ourselves about. You know, we don't get hot when we see these people. You know, we don't even get um, 
as a, as it went into jealousy. You don't get jealous at their ways. You don't get jealous because, you know, you see them and they're living it up as it seems. Because ultimately, when you really get into it, these people are miserable. They're poor, according to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. I believe if you start at verse 17 or 18, you know, it tells you that they know not that they're poor, miserable, wretched, so on and so forth. They're not truly in a good condition. And we can't fret ourselves because of what they portray and how they look. And we damn sure don't fret ourselves because the so-called white man, because there's nothing truly about him, you know, that we honestly desire outside of his rulership, which ultimately and truly belongs to us. So you fret not yourself because of the evildoers, because these these scriptures are for one the true riches. What we have is the true riches. And it, it has just not been made manifest here on earth completely yet. But amongst your yourself, you should see and realize that, you know, speaking to those of you who are of the elect, you know, Lord willing, I'm part of that number, but really we have the goal. And you can see that amongst yourself. You can see that amongst this knowledge that we have and understanding of these scriptures that we are truly the goal. And we have no reason to be fretted in any kind of way, giving none of our energy to the world because we know the end of the world. And we understand how that is all going to play out for these people who don't want to come out of this pollution, come out of this wickedness, come out of the evil doings of this world. So not at all do we fret ourselves because the evil doers. We can't give our energy to them because, you know, simply put, we're seeking the kingdom. We're seeking to be able to get on those chariots and escape this pollution and actually receive a real kingdom, a true kingdom, an everlasting kingdom that'll never end, um, that involves things that, you know, eyes have not seen or ears have not heard, things that we can't even explain to the foolish right now. Those things that we are promised of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, to you true believers of the Israelite nation out there, you know, the hopeful elect, you know, that has forsaken this world. You know, this is, um, you know, meant to be some exhortation, you know, to continue in this faith and continue believing because we have so much coming for us. Don't fret yourself. I'm going to read it again. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. It says, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. And what's iniquity? Iniquity is wickedness. So... We don't give our energy to that, and we stay completely immersed in these scriptures and the gospel, which is the good news, you know, which, you know, is going to uphold us through us understanding the knowledge of these scriptures and just being wise, simply putting these um, scriptures to work, man. When when we possibly can be fretted by the, um, the wickedness of the world, the evildoers, because, again, they look... Like they're doing well, but wicked glory only lasts for a short time. It's only going to be short lived. And we know that because we know that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. And we're seeing the so-called white man's world come to an end before our eyes. So again, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Let's come here to Proverbs chapter 3, 31st verse. It says, envy thou not the oppressor. And that's just a continuance of understanding the evildoers, the root of the evildoers being the wicked, as we know again to be the so-called white man, who is also our oppressor. The man who took our ancestors and put us into bondage, sold our, um, our, our forefathers all over the earth, took everything that we had from us, took our our heritage told us that we was black, so on and so forth. All these atrocities whipped our backs in, beat our ancestors' backs in, told us that, you know, we are, you know, not a people, lied to us, you know. All these atrocities that they have, it says, envy thou not the oppressor. There's no envy in that. We don't give them energy because we understand what we truly have through these scriptures, which is a kingdom. We have a power that loves us. It says, and choose none of his ways, because when you choose his ways, you end up being the evildoer. You end up on the other side 
of what salvation is. And our salvation is our deliverance out of this wickedness, out of the so-called white man's kingdom, the entrance into our kingdom where we rule, we govern, where we have all our heart's desires provided due to our simple faith and our works, which is us believing and showing forth, you know, in our actions. So envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Let's come into the book of Matthew chapter four. We're going to start at, the verse, at verse eight. It says again, the devil taketh him up into a seating high mountain. And, um, The devil being, again, as we know, a spiritual entity, but that spiritual entity's counterpart is the so-called white man. That's that's why he's known as the wicked. We call the so-called white man the devil because he is the devil. He's a deceiver. He works off of deception. The riches that he presents to the world that people or you might be fretted by are all a deception. They're not true riches. Therefore, those people who take on those ways and follow in the ways of evildoers, they're ultimately done already. And this is the account of Yahweh after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, you know, being being tempted of the devil. You know, and this, this is a spiritual entity of the devil, but the so-called white man does so very similarly on a physical level. It says, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And that's exactly, and this was happening to the Lord, Yahweh Shai, spiritually, but the so-called white man does very much so the same when you think about the athletes, all the celebrities, you know, people who are in corporate positions. The devil took them up to an exceeding high mountain, took them to a high place. We have skyscrapers, you know, um, you can go to the space now and look down at the earth. All of these different things they have and they show you the world. And ultimately, to be part of that and to stay continuous part of it, you have to bow down to the devil. You have to be in his ways. You have to be giving him your energy. You have to fret yourself to actually try to stay in that position and actually obtain and keep those positions because that's what all those celebrities, actors, ball players, that's what they're doing. You know, they're in the hands of their oppressors. They're in the hands of the wicked and they're playing his game. It says, and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Because that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to worship him. He wants you to be fretted by his ways. He wants you to see all that he offers. He wants you to buy in. You know, but the scriptures are telling us to buy into this truth, buy into the words of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. So, we will get to the next scripture, Matthew chapter seven, and um, start at verse thirteen. It says, "Enter ye in at the straight gate." That's the true entrance. All right, we're not fretted by the devil and what he's offering. Enter ye in at the straight gate. It says, "For wide is the gate." And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And that's what Satan offers you. The wide and broad way. You can have all you want. You can have this. You can have that. You can have whatever you want in this world. Because again, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. And that's the wide and broad way. All of these different ways that are subscribed to you. But it says, enter ye in at the straight gate. And it's telling you why you need to enter in at the straight gate. It says, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way that lead it to destruction. All right, destruction. What is destruction? Let's touch that real quick. To destroying utter destruction of vessels, perishing, ruin, destruction. Look, of money, the, the destruction which consists of eternal misery and hell. All right, and coming down here, what does it say? Die. All right, to perish. This is death. So that why gate is ultimately going to lead to your death. It says, and many, and many there be which go in there at. And that's the world. And those who are following that wide and broad way. Those who are following the ways of the evildoers. The wicked. The so-called white man who is the devil. According to these scriptures. Verse 14 says, because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. 
and that narrow and straight way is Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, fearing the Lord and following his commandments, you know, keeping his ways, understanding this doctrine, you know, and believing and showing through what in your works. It says, which lead it unto life and few there be that find it. And there's only going to be few that find it. And we know the few are at this point, the hopeful elect and Lord willing, you know, we the elect, you know, we are actually able to escape. And that means you what found that straight gate and you stayed upon it. And the straight gate is more strenuous than the wide and broad way. But that journey is worth it. All right, so I got a few more scriptures and I'm going to close out. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 20. In verse 9, it says, There is a sinner that hath good success in evil things. So there's sinners that have good success. They're doing evil things, though. They went that... They went down that um that wide and broad way. They look like they made a come up. You know, you got your LeBron James, your Kendrick Lamars, your Jay Z's, you know, your um, you know, so on and so forth, man. You know, I don't have to go through these names, but these people who um have the appearance of riches, you know, but ultimately they're going down a way that's leading to their destruction. It says there is a sinner that hath good success in evil things. All right, things that aren't of the Lord. It says, and there is a gain that turneth to loss. And that gain that they actually accepted in this world to start to bow down and serve Satan, to serve the devil, to serve the so-called white man, is actually going to end in their death. And that's that loss. That gain that they have right now is going to ultimately be their loss. All right, so we'll come back here and close out. The book of Psalms, chapter 37. We'll start at one. It says, A Psalm of David, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. It says, For they shall soon be cut down. Their ways, all of their riches, they're going to be cut down. It says, Like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Just like grass get cut, their ways are going to be cut down. You know, and you don't think about grass once it's cut. Verse 3 says, trust in the Lord, the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. So you're going to be fed simply by moving according to this doctrine, you know, and not fretting yourself because of the evildoers, man. Not giving them your energy. Put all your energy into this word. Verse 4 says, delight thyself also in the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And that's that kingdom and everything that comes with it. And things that you probably can't even imagine in this current estate. But they are promised to come. So I'm just going to say, Lord willing, this was edifying, exhorting, and admonishing. Shalom.